everyone, welcome back to Mini Bike Mike's Garage. Well, as you can tell from my voice, I've got a little bit of a cold. I just recently got back from a RV trip from the Red River Gorge. Um, Mama Warren and I took a few days away. and I must have caught something while I was gone. And uh, I'm actually feeling pretty good now. It's still showing up in my voice. Uh, but I wanted to get started on this XL70. It's been a couple weeks since I posted a video where we got this up and running and took it for just a little bit of a spin and uh, I put it out there to you guys. Did you want to work on this bike or work on another one? And you guys wanted to, you guys pretty much wanted to see this one. So today is the day. I'm gonna start by taking off this. Now I'm not gonna get rid of that. We're gonna save that. That's a good wall hanger. I don't know what they made that out of, but it's got multiple layers. They tried to stiffen it up. Pretty neat. But we'll set that off to the side, and that'll get hung up on the wall. Today's video is just going to be just me tearing this down. Taking my time to take it apart. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. Now, you might notice that I've already got the seat and the side cases off of it. Uh, I Before I left on the trip, I had a couple days or had a day or so there where I had a little bit of time, not a lot of time. So I started, I started taking uh, some things off and, and started repairing those, which I did film it, so it'll be later on in the video, but... Uh, that's why you see a couple parts off now. Taking that tank off, this thing looks to be fairly complete. Uh, I'm, oh, you know what? That's the one thing I was, was concerned about was this wiring harness. Uh, I don't know if it's showing up there on the film. Where they took the headlight and the turn signals. Hang on, so I'm, I'm struggling with one of these little retaining clips <clears throat> where they took the headlight and the turn signals off right here the wiring harness is just like a big taped up mess and i'm really hoping that they didn't uh you know just clip wires i'm hoping they took the time to actually um you know, just unplugged them. So give me a second. I'm going to go get something to cut all this tape off, and we're going to take a look together. I don't know if you guys can actually see it or not, but see there's this huge tape ball here. Well, so far, so good. It doesn't look like they just took a pair of side cuts and just cut the wires. It, Because that will sure make life a lot easier when I go to put a headlight on and the turn signals if they didn't uh, booger it up too bad. So what have we got going on here? No, you know what? I think we're going to be okay. It looks like they just, they might have taped off some ends. Uh... I think the bullet connectors are under there. They just taped them off so they wouldn't be bare wires. But that that's good news right there that they didn't actually just go hog wild and just start cutting that. So, all right. Let me get you back set up in a different spot and we'll continue to take off this front end. This is one of the things I've been wanting to get rid of from the very, from the moment I saw this bike. I think that's someone's homemade padding they put on there. Oh no, don't stick to it. I'm gonna have a little work. Yeah, it's it's kind of I don't know. I don't think they glued it to the handlebars, but it's I think just over time it just kind of adhered itself. So I'm gonna have some cleanup work there. 
Oh, well, it is what it is. Uh, if I remember right, the speedometer did work in our, uh, let's see, what do I want to do next? The speedometer did work when we took the bike out for a spin. Which is good. Most of the time they don't work because somebody's had the front tire off and they didn't put the speedometer gear back in there correctly, but apparently they did on this one because we know the front tire's been off because that one fork is turned around backwards, if you remember right. This is an aftermarket clutch perch and setup. The wires for the original are still inside the handlebars. I did get another, I think I'm going to do away with this. I found another left side controls that I believe I don't know they're off of an XL70. I think they're off of like a, a CB125 or something along those lines, but it looked like it had the same setup. So I've got a table of parts over there all laid out. It's, uh, so I bought that for like 15 bucks off of eBay. And when we, probably won't happen in today's video, but in the video where we start kind of going through the parts and cleaning those things up. Um, you'll, we'll go over that and make sure that it's going to work correctly. Okay. I'm going to take just a minute here and unplug everything in this harness so I can kind of get it out of the way. Take the handlebars off without wires hanging up. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, let's go around to the other side and let's take off the things over here. can't get enough slack to get it to come off. Let's see if we can get the uh, we'll get the cable out of it. There we go. Oh, that's right. That bottom one's going to have wiring that goes from the kill switch and so forth. So I, that's not going to slide right off of there. Huh. I guess we're going to leave it on there. <laughs> How about that? Um, let's see if this... take the throttle off maybe it's not coming off as easy as I thought it would oh there it goes just to just so it's not kind of hanging in our way and so forth uh, I think I do want to take these cables off <clears throat> That, this is for the front brake switch. What just fell? Oh, that was just a clip to hold the cables together. All right. So I think the handlebars 
might come loose now. Probably would have been easier if I'd have taken the speedometer off. <clears throat> <clears throat> there we go. As I take this stuff apart, I like to kind of put pieces back together so that I know where they where they went, what they go to. Let's see if we can get this speedometer cable the rest of the way off. Got an oily mess down here. Cables, uh, still got a clutch cable to remove. Okay. I forgot the eight millimeter I need for the speedometer. Trying not to drop pieces here. If you haven't figured it out by now, the, uh, the plan is to completely disassemble this bike, get it down to the bare frame. I've got a broken steering stop up here on the uh, steering head that I need to, uh, the steering neck that I need to repair. Uh, and then I like to just go ahead and cl clean it up and repaint the frame. And this isn't a restoration. You know, for you guys that have been around long enough, you know I don't really do that. It's just kind of a freshen up. So I do have some new parts. We're putting new tires on it, new brakes on it. I got a seat cover, decals but we're not repainting it. We'll try and clean this up the best we can. It's just uh, just kind of a freshen, freshen it up. Let's see, I if we can get the horn off of there. Still can't get it off because there's one bolt that goes that's between the bracket and the fender that goes up through the, the center. <clears throat> so we're gonna have to see if we can get the get the fender off. It's already got a broken bolt right.
as that clip ends, I'm showing, I'm holding the exhaust up to the camera that's not rolling, and I'm showing it this dent that it has here where obviously something's hit it, hit the exhaust, and then it's also blown out. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this exhaust, try and fix that. I actually have a brand new one that I have a feeling that I'm going to wind up putting on the bike. Well, I think my camera stopped without me knowing it. And so you guys might have missed a few things. Apologize about that. Taking the carburetor off. And I want to, I got the front fender off. I took the top, triple or uh, the top clamp off. I've got the top engine bolt out I'm trying to get to the side case here now so see if I can get it off to see if we can uh, get this sprocket off chain off oh my look how much <clears throat> look at the stuff that is inside this amazing look at that <laughs> I don't think that's been off there in a while. Let's see if we can get this nut off here so we can get the rest of the chain guard off. Ah, the whole thing is spinning on me. And that's the that's the swing arm bolt that it's it goes around. I'm gonna try and back it off a little bit. All right, there we go. Perfect. Let's see what have they got here. Oh wow, they've got hex head, Allen head. Well, as for as as dirty and uh, built up as it was, the flywheel sure looks clean, doesn't it? Ooh, they put those on there tight. Oh my goodness. I'll get back in there. These things have such a small sprocket on the front. What is this? A 12 or 13 tooth? It's tiny. Today, there we go. Oh, and it's laid over too. Let's see. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen tooth sprocket. We'll replace it. These are the teeth are starting to kind of lay over. Uh, let's see. We need to get out this bottom engine bolt right here. So then we can pull the engine. To get to the nut for the bottom engine bolt, it's actually behind the brake pedal here. Oh, did I grab the wrong thing? I did grab the wrong socket. I've had that Craftsman tool set for at least seven or eight years. I just now realized for the half inch drive socket set, I put two 18 millimeter sockets and no 19 millimeter socket, which is what I needed for that. So fortunately, a three quarter inch is about the same size. So I got that to work. Uh, I forgot to grab needle nose pliers to take the spring off. Okay. 
There's our brake switch. Can I get that out of there without taking that rod off? Probably not, can I? Oh, I don't want to go down that way. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm going to run out of room before I get the rod off. There we go. All right, so I still have to take this, take that rod off of there, but now we can at least get to that other bolt. Hey, I thought for sure the whole thing would spin on us. It didn't. Let's see what kind of hassle we've got to get the engine out of there now. Uh, do I need to take spark plug out? These original engines are so much easier then putting an aftermarket engine in there that's got a bigger fins and the head and so forth. So, all right. So we've got the heart out of the beast. Let's see, what's this? This is a couple eight millimeters maybe. What to do next? <clears throat> I think I'm gonna go ahead and finish taking off the uh, <clears throat> the back here. Well, that doesn't feel good. Yeah, that's all stripped out. <clears throat> that's not good. They've got the threads all wonky on that thing. Great, it's gonna be fun to That'll be fun trying to get that figured back out. Since I failed to catch it on camera when I was taking that shock off and show you the condition of the threads, <laughs> there they are. Yeah, I got a little work to do. I'm not sure exactly what I'm how I'm gonna tackle that to repair that. I may just cut those threads off and weld another bolt in there. I'll tackle that on another day, but I wanted to come back and show it to you. Uh, okay, let's take off the brake stay. in the way there. All right, what size we got up here? 14. Oh, there's so much mud and I should have power washed this thing before I started taking it apart, quite honestly. All right, <clears throat> guess we need to take the rear axle off. This rear axle doesn't look good at all.
not moving, is it? There's the barrel for the rear brake. I don't want to lose that. What do I do with my hand? There it is. Well, this is not working. I need to take a little pressure off of it. <clears throat> there we go. Broken axle adjuster. Looks like a homemade one. Looks like it's a nut with a piece of thread rod welded onto it. There we go. And all of this is going to get replaced. I don't know if you can see that. How much that wobbles inside that. All the spokes are shot. Instead of trying to repair this one, I've actually got another SL70 tire set up that I'm going to use. Let's see if the swing arm bolt will come the rest of the way out. I didn't take the other shock off, did I? This side looks a heck of a lot better than the other side. The threads. I think the swing arm is bent also. I think this left side is bent down. I think this thing is kind of tweaked a little bit. We'll have to check that out. All right, last thing. Let's take this, uh, let's move to the front and take the front end off and then clean this mess up. This tire actually held air. After, you know, when I aired it up, when we took the initial ride, what's that? That's been three weeks ago or better now. So the tube must be good. I've got a brand new front tire, the tire itself. We're going to use the rim and the, uh, and hopefully the tube. If not, I've got spare tube also. Yeah, that all looks really, really good. Well, the last challenge for this uh, disassembly is to see if we can get these forks out of here. I like to take those out, clean them up. I've got to, like I said, I've got to replace this fork stop up here.
<laughs> not, not moving at all, are they? Not really. It just needed some juice, huh? There's one. There we go. Yeah, see how this, our stop is broke. We're gonna grind that off, weld another piece on there. So probably gonna pull this out. Uh, I need to clean this mess up, put a towel down so I don't lose all the ball bearings that are inside of here. Off camera, I took the uh, kickstand and the foot pegs off. <clears throat> so now I'm ready to pull this Steering off the front here. And if you've never done this, this has got uh, 21 little loose ball bearings, top and bottom. I've got a big gap right there where there are none, so I'm going to hope they're stuck to the top, but I like to put down a towel so if they fall, they just don't, uh, they don't start bouncing all over the place. The towel kind of absor absorbs them a little bit like that. And there's a couple there, they're falling. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So we have all twenty-one ball bearings. You have to make sure that you have all those. So now we can fix this steering stop. That is broke right here. I'll have to grind off this little piece. Uh, this piece has two parts that stick up on it. And as that turn, as you turn the wheel, it's they're supposed to hit that. They're doing it there because I don't have the I've got it up in there farther because of the bearings. But it's broke and it's allowing this to turn more. So I've got to cut this off, re-weld a little longer piece on there, so I've got a good steering stop. I'll clean all the grease off of these, get them all good and cleaned up. Clean the rest of the frame up and get it spray painted, so then we can go back to, uh, well, probably the next video will be maybe cleaning up and working on some of the parts, and then there'll be a third video where we assemble it all back together. All right, guys, I'm gonna stop there for today. Uh, I've got the bike completely disassembled, got a table full of parts. I'm, like I said, I'm a little bit under the weather. Uh, that took about an hour, maybe hour and a half. I'm not really sure how long that took. Um, I apologize for losing some of the footage early on. As most of you know, I filmed with an iPhone, and apparently I got a phone call at some point. Someone tried to reach out to me, and when you get a phone call while you're using the video, it shuts the video off, uh, cuts cuts off, you know, off the filming. So that's why I lost that. I apologize. Uh, I will do a better job in the next two videos during the cleanup and the assembly to make sure that I catch everything. But for today, I think I'm going to call it quits and uh, get everything kind of cleaned up, start getting organized to be cleaned up, and then we'll move on to the next video. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you following along.